Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching Blue Sky Flight. My name is Bob, and this is my arrow that I'm doing a restoration on on the interior right now. So, bring you up to date on a little bit about uh, where I'm at in the process and some things that I learned almost the hard way um, just the other day. So I've been putting in a lot of hours on the Arrow um, and had been just kind of taking my time with it as I went along, waiting on side panels and seats that had to be delivered. So I knew I had a little bit of time to kind of uh, work with there. So I was taking my time with it and everything. And then the side panels arrived the other day, hooray. And I started uh, going at it a little bit harder and heavier than I uh, maybe had been in the past because just anxious to get the airplane back in the air. But definitely learned a lesson <laughs> from that. And that is take your time. Uh, not everything is always gonna go as planned. Sometimes things go a little bit uh, more difficult and challenging. Case in point, the headliner is in. I was putting in some of the trim pieces for that. And sometimes a little bit difficult finding where the holes were underneath that. Fortunately, I took a lot of good photos before and during the dismantling of everything. So using those images, it kind of helps me figure out about where they're at and then kind of feel my way. But anyway, it was kind of a long day. I was getting a little bit hot and a little bit tired and the frustration started to take over a little bit. And I probably pushed it a little bit further than I should have. And there's a couple minor things I'm gonna have to correct now. So lesson learned there is when you kind of start feeling that way, put the tools down, step away from the airplane and come back at it another day. So I took a day off and I feel a lot better about it now. Got to watch SpaceX this morning doing their first test flight. They actually got a launch on Starship today. was fun to watch. Yeah, the rocket blew up once it tried to do its stage separation. It's icing on the cake. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but uh, a successful failure because they learn a lot from it. It was a test flight. Really all they wanted to accomplish was clearing the launch pad on that. So that was fun to watch. If you haven't followed any of that, it's some great stuff to watch. SpaceX covers all their launches. And there's another YouTuber out there, a guy named Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. If you search that on YouTube, you'll find his site. I'll leave a link to his stuff in the video descriptions below because um, he's basically self-taught on everything about rockets and how they work. He interviews a lot of the different emerging companies that are out there. He's even got some great interviews of him one-on-one -on -one with Elon Musk at the SpaceX facility, walking around, talking about what they're doing and the rocket engines and all that. Really interesting guy, fun to watch. And because of all the work that he's done on it and the audience that he's built for that, the first lunar mission that SpaceX is gonna do with Starship that was bought out by a billionaire, he bought all the seats on it and he's putting a lot of people on it. People that can kind of share that spectacular view and that experience with the general population. So a lot of writers, influencers, people along those lines. Anyway, about a million people applied for it. And Tim Dodd, this lucky young man, um, is gonna be on that first uh, flight around the moon on Starship. So how awesome is that for him, right? Anyway, back to the airplane. Let me show you what's going on on the inside and what we've done to date. So as you can see, the carpet in the front is just about done. There's some trim pieces that go around this that pulls that down. And then up here, got some more insulation to go in there and then the side panel comes down here. I'm waiting to put the side panel in, test fit it, and then I'll be putting the insulation in just prior to that. Same kind of stuff on the other side, but overall most of the carpeting and everything is done up here. Did the uh, repaint on the throttle quadrant here. That was pretty, uh, pretty beat up, so that came out nice. Pretty happy with that. 
And then uh, there's the back of the airplane. We've got the wing spar covered. This kind of holds itself down a couple different ways. Number one, uh, this piece here has snaps on each side here. That puts a lot of pressure right there, kind of holds that in position. Then you just kind of wrap it up around the wing spar itself. Again, I didn't want to glue that down because you've got your, uh, your bolts right here uh, on the top of each side. Those are the top uh, bolts that hold on the wing spar. So you kind of don't want to put a bunch of glue and things on that. And you certainly want to get access to that during an annual inspection. And then for the back side of it, this is where the rear seats go. And this is basically a, a giant piece of plywood that has the carpeting on it. And you push that up and it goes right against the back side of this. So again, that holds that carpet in there really tight. Once this is in here, it pushes tight against that. And then as you can see, there's a trim piece here that screws in place there and that holds this board from shifting at all. And then you put your two seats on top of that. So for this, all I've got remaining on it is, um, there's a hole here in the middle that gets cut out. It's got the, uh, the seat belt connectors and then the seat brackets get mounted around that so i'll put that in and then in the back that's the carpet for the uh, the baggage compartment and that is on top of soundproofing insulation underneath that but it's kind of held in place because you've got brackets on the outside that hold it down there and then this trim piece here when you screw that down to this board that actually puts pressure and holds the whole thing in place so none of that stuff's going anywhere so Carpeting is just about done, some fine details, but most of the details that are left on that, I'll wait until I get the side panels put in place for that. And then the headliner, at this point, I've started putting some of the trim pieces back in for that, and I've got the air vents back in place, and then I'm working on putting up the, uh, the trim that goes across the top here. That's the part where I ran into a little bit of a snag trying to find a couple of the holes there and uh, got just a little bit frustrated with it, but... Um, went back, found a lot of the pictures that I took when I took this thing apart. And so I think I know where everything is now to get all that stuff lined up. So we'll continue on from there. But that's probably my biggest piece of advice. And I know I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. When you do this project, take pictures all along the way, all over the place. So it takes them a lot of pictures before you take anything apart. And then as you take things out, Take very detailed pictures, looking at all the screw holes, everything about how things go back together makes life a lot easier when, you know, a month or two later, you're putting things back in trying to figure out where they go. Well, guys, here's another fun lesson learned. So I put up some of the trim pieces, as you can see in here. And when I put them up, to me, the color seemed darker than I thought it would be. What I was trying to do with this is the side panels are two-tone, right? The, bo the bottom is black. Um, or coal as they call it to match the seats. And then the top along here is what they call it dove. It's a very, very, very light gray color. And obviously I was waiting on the seat panels to come in while I was doing that, you know, took all of this trim out, spent a great deal of time stripping that down, sanding it down, doing all of the stuff that you need to do to prep it and then paint it with fairly expensive paint that's specifically for plastic so that it doesn't peel, that, that kind of stuff. I've got some of that detailed in, in the other videos. In order to get a good color match, all I had to go with was the color swatch that I had from Airtex because I didn't have uh, the actual panels with me at the time. So I took those that color swatch down to a, a paint supplier that specialized in that kind of automotive interior kind of paint and had them do a color match on it. And so I painted it, and when it all came out, I, I liked the color of it, but now when I'm putting it in an airplane, it seems darker than I wanted it to be. So I took some of that and laid it next to the side panels that have now arrived, and it did seem indeed darker. So my first thought was that the paint supplier messed up on the paint. But I know that they've spent the time to color match it, so I wasn't sure if that was the issue, and now I figured out what the issue is. The issue is the original trim color was even darker than this. The paint doesn't go on like normal paint. It's very, very thin, and you do it in very light applications, especially the first one, and then you put several coats on there, which I did. However, what I found out, there was one trim piece that I could not keep. 
I tried to keep as many of the trim pieces in the airplane as I could. And if you're wondering why, um, then you've never priced out the pieces of plastic that go in your airplane. Because even though they are just pieces of plastic, uh, pieces of plastic like this, like this, can be several hundred dollars just for a piece of molded plastic because, of course, it's for an airplane. So the one piece that I, I had to replace was this little guy here, and I think this was maybe, I don't know, 15 or $20, which still, for a piece of plastic, that's a lot of money. Well, there's the original color of it. It's a very light kind of beige color, if you will, and then I painted it with the, the new paint. What I've now noticed... Now that I'm in the airplane and I've got it next to some of the trim that I did, as you can see, it's a good bit lighter than the other trim pieces. So the issue was not that the paint shop didn't mix the paint correct. The issue was this stuff was already darker to begin with. And even though I put on multiple coats to make sure I had really good coverage on it, because I think that paint goes on so thin, it still let the old color tint it, if you will, a little bit. So now the decision will become, do I redo all the trim? Well, I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to put the side panels in and see how it all looks together. Right now, like I said, it's darker than I wanted it to be. And so I'm not feeling totally happy about it, but it may be acceptable. Once I put everything in here, I, I'm, it may be acceptable to me uh, because that paint is $25 a can, whether you have it shipped already mixed or you go ahead and do a color match on it and they have to alter it a little bit. It's still $25 for one spray can. And because it goes on so thin, one spray can doesn't go very far. So what I would have to do basically is take all these back out. I'd probably have to paint them a much lighter color, like a beige or an off-white, to lighten them up significantly and then put the paint on there. So that would be a bit of a process. The process itself doesn't bother me. Spending several hundred dollars more on a few cans of paint. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. But... I guess for the size of the project, if that's what it takes to make it look the way I wanted it to, maybe I'll do that. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. What would you do? What do you think of the color? Do you think it's it's too dark for the interior? Again, I know right now it looks like a big contrast between the ceiling here and, and that. But trim piece, going to go all the way around the window will be this color. So there'll be a lot of this trim right up to that. And I thought it was kind of a nice contrast, but again, I didn't expect it to be quite as dark as it is. thought it would be just a little bit lighter than the headliner, kind of like that is there. See, that I think would have been a much better color on that. Well, let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, and you know, as always, if you guys are working on another project, let me know how that's going. Tell me all about it. Thanks. I'm going to get back to work. All right, so I got that up. I'm going to make an adjustment to this guy here. This is the one that I kind of messed up a little bit the other day. So I'll make a small adjustment to that. Back ones are in, and um, I took this guy out. That's why I was kind of doing a weird little dance there, trying to put all that stuff in. Took that out so that I can um, put in all the brackets that hold in the seats. Got to drill those holes out. I've got them already drilled out to where I want them on the wood itself. Just need to drill through the carpet and put all that stuff together so the seats can mount into that. That's easier to do in the garage. So I'm going to take it home and do that, knock that part of it out. So yeah, it's coming along well. I'm going to uh, call it quits here in the airplane for the day. I'll head back to the garage, work on that stuff, getting all those brackets installed. But let me know what you think. If you like what you're seeing so far in, uh, in general, give us a like. I'd appreciate the thumbs up on that. 
you like the content, you want to see more as we progress with this beautiful airplane, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon if you want to get notified when we uh, post a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.